Ah, another tank right by the fireplace, right by the TV. I'm digging it already. I'm also noticing the stand right off the bat. We'll get another look at that in just a minute, but I really like how he's covered the stand. There you go, look at that. Nice wood finish here. I wonder if he made this by hand. This is quite slick. This is probably a skin as there's no doors to it, but it makes a nice compliment to the tank, but it doesn't overpower the tank. I'm liking this already. I'm looking forward to getting a look at under the skin in just a minute. Nice tank. Okay, here we go. Powered by T5s for you T5 lovers, but notice there's LED bars in the back. Nice thing to add to your T5s, or if you're a T5 guy, if you're an LED guy, add some T5s to your LEDs. Oh, but look, he's getting an upgrade. I hope he bought it from us, which he bought from us. Awesome. Thank you for shopping with us. Back to the tank. Nice 120 gallon tank here. Got a white tail tang, white tail bristle tooth, fox face. Whoa, check out that clam. I'm a big clam guy. And this one looks fantastic. Nice blue, uh, probably a Maxima right there up front. Mantle is extended. It looks happy. Love it. I'm loving that square back Anthias right there in the center as well. Nice touch to the tank. So let's take a look at this aquascaping for a minute. These uh, reminds me of um, like cathedrals, uh, canyon out there in Utah or Star Wars. We have these pillars or bummies as they call them in Australia with a flat top. So personally, I get it from an SPS placement standpoint and it's just not necessarily my taste. I'm not saying there's something wrong with it. I'm just telling you my first thoughts as I'm looking at this tank. I still like having those high sections. I'm not a fan of the really flat aquascape that seems to be popular and really low aquascape. I would like to have more rocks underneath it so it looks more natural as opposed to a, a pillar with a flat top. That's just my taste, but the tank looks really good. Digging the fish uh, that are in here, this potter's wrasse is doing loops over there on the right. Congrats on keeping those guys, not the easiest fish to keep. Uh, let's get zoom in here uh, for a closer look at the tank. Uh, and really have a look at these corals. There's my nice square back there. So we've got some LPS on the sand bed. It looks at this point like this is a dominant, SPS dominant uh, type of tank with some nice mix there. We've got a couple frags here that digi colony is grown out. Uh, not surprised there, digi is a weedy type of coral. A lot of people like it, it's easy to keep and they are colorful, but they tend to take over because they grow really, really fast growing much faster than the other SPS on this uh, coral top here, this live rock top. The other thing I'm noticing about this is the placement of the frags. Okay, yes, these are one inch frags. A couple of them have some branches on them. I would space them out a little bit more because as well as this tank is doing in six months, maybe even as most a year, those corals are gonna be right on top of one another. They're gonna fight and you're likely gonna wish that they were spread out further apart. It's also gonna let them grow um, to make bigger colonies. Now, if he's liking the really dense look where corals are touching one another, that's fine. Personally, I would remove a couple, give them more space to grow so we have less coral, but bigger colonies. I'm digging that fox face too. Magnificent fox face, always one of my favorites. Really striking fish that's a hardworking uh, algae eater uh, in the tank. All right, looks like he's got some Satosa on the front of this rock here, which I like, one of my favorite, easy to keep SPS corals. Okay, so here's a great example. Back to what I was saying about spacing the corals out. To the right of that snail, we've got a nice big flat open space. He may have a plan for this, but going back to what I was saying about spacing things, I would take like that orange, it looks like a Millie, it's a nice looking um, flow there. Yep, looks like a Millie. I take that orange guy and I would move it up a little bit, get it away from those two red pieces, get it away from the green in the back, give it room to grow. Then I wouldn't add any more to that rock. Let those pieces encrust, let them grow up. So we have bigger colonies with different, less, with less different types of coral. And that's just my taste. That's how I would run it. But the corals that are in there are looking great. Look, they've encrusted on here. We've got a nice uh, meteor shower, sophastria over there, this elegance looks good. All right, so a little bit of cyano on the sand bread. Now, the owner of this tank told me that they recently experienced that. They went a little overboard with amino acids, which can happen. Sure, you would like to not see the cyano there. And one thing that I see reefers get really bent out of shape is they feel like the sand bed in the tank has to be completely devoid of algae, completely clean. 
which I get from an aesthetic standpoint. And every time I've been in the ocean, dove on reefs, I've seen cyanobacteria, I've seen some hair algae. I'm not saying you have to go nuts with it in your tank, but if you have a little bit in one place, you don't need to go berserko. You don't need to nuke the tank with a chemical to try to get rid of it. Simply suction it off. If it comes back, it's okay. That means your tank's running, things are growing in there, you got some biodiversity. So, sure, you would like to have this off the sand bed. If it was my tank, I'd suction off the little bit that's there. It's not concerning about where it is right now. Clam looks good, that Lobo looks good, the Zoa's in the back. Here's my square back coming to show off again. Another nice a balmy here with some SPS. Okay, so, this tank is doing really well. This SPS are growing. Looks like he's got a forest fire digi. He might have had some forest fire over there. I would remove that digi just to give myself more space for some higher end SPS like he's got on this tank because they look like they're doing really, really well. The tank looks great. At this point, I'm going to be removing more of my bread and butter SPS. Maybe keep one or two, like, you know, green slimer. That's a bread and butter type SPS, which is a really cool growing coral, so I would keep it. Some of these other ones, like the digis, I would move those out to give myself room for some more designer type of SPS that was my tank. This guy might like his bread and butters. He might like his digi. That's cool. That's just what I would do. Overall, though, I like the tank. Loving the clam, really beautiful setup here. Nice and clean with a good mix of fish. Okay, so I would put some fairy wrasses in here if I had to talk about the fish a little bit more. I like the potter's rash, I like the leopard wrasse there. I would go for some fairies, some smaller ones. Um, even the red velvet fairy wrasse is an easy keeper that gets sizable, not that expensive, just to add a little bit different uh, to the tank. So we've got some tangs, we've got the fox face and the copper band. So I would just mix it up that way. Okay, nothing wrong, this is just what I'm seeing as I'm reacting to this tank. Let's have a look underneath the hood. Ooh, red pipe and Schedule 80 fittings. I dig it. So this guy has a lot going on in his sump, but definitely is taking pride in the plumbing. Plumbing for me is something that I take a lot of pride in so I can relate to this guy. Now, I'm not a fanboy of colored pipes, but that's just me. But the point is, He's taking the time to plumb this out really well. He hasn't gone crazy with unions because in this case, the sump's not gonna get removed unless he's yanking it out, probably to get a bigger tank. So I'm liking what I'm seeing there. He's taking some pride in his plumbing. Everything looks nice and clean. I like it. Nice Nio skimmer here, which is pulling out some nasty looking skimmate in this tank, which I would expect from 120 with a bio load that's in there. Things rocking it, doing it well. Ooh, and he's got a skimmate locker from a vast. That's a nice way to extend the life of cleaning your skimmer, or if you're out of town, you don't have to worry about someone coming by and skimming it, uh, cleaning the skimmer. It looks like he's got a CO2 scrubber uh, to the side there as well. He mentioned in the video that since him and his wife are now working at home due to COVID, CO2 in the house has gone up, pH in the tank has gone down. Um, hey, if you want to chase pH, knock yourself out. Not, I don't expect you to see a big change in the tank, but it gives you something to tinker with. Tunzi uh, algae reactor, that's a Tunzi Kato or algae reactor, they call it a macro algae reactor. My favorite algae reactor on the market. It's thought out really well. Tunzi makes great stuff. Um, really like this thing. Small, look, it's not going to give you tons of nutrient export, but it's going to give you something which is better than nothing. One thing I am seeing about this sump, which is interesting, is there's a fair amount of live rock there in what would normally be a refugium type chamber. So the idea is that it's giving you more filtration. He doesn't have a lot in the tank. He's got more in the sump. One thing I would keep in mind about this is that's gonna trap a lot of detritus. So I would get in there every couple months, turn off the pump, stir that up, and then suck out the water because this can end up being pretty nasty. You can already see some detritus down there at the bottom. Some of that you're gonna want, but over time it's gonna build up and be a nuisance. Trident for automatic water testing, some dosing pumps here as well as a UV, which he said he added after the fact. But still, added, he's got clamps on his soft tubing, which is awesome from a safety standpoint, and it looks really good. This guy's detail-oriented, he takes pride in his system. Sure, you could put the UV somewhere else, but he's got it where he's got it, and he's done a good job of making everything as safe and secure in a small footprint underneath this tank. So he's got a lot going on, but he's done some wire management, Obviously, he cares about his system. It looks great. Some automation there as well. He's running a little bit of GFO right here in this reactor. 
One thing that I've always been a fan of is listening to what your tank tells you. If you don't need to run GFO because you don't have a phosphate issue, then don't run it. It's not like you have to have GFO or have to have carbon in order to have the tank be successful. So in his case, he said that he does have that tons of microalgae reactor on there, but he has some larger fish in the tank and not that much live rock, so he couldn't quite keep his phosphates where he wanted them. But you notice he didn't load up on GFO. There's just a little bit. That's all that he needs to keep his phosphates where he wants them. So listen to what your tank is telling you. Run your test, see where your numbers fall out. Don't add GFO until you need it. Don't add bio pellets or carbon dosing nopox until your tank tells you that you need it. I like that this guy's listened to his tank and he's dosing, he's adding the GFO accordingly, not just what some calculator tells you um, that you need. Some cooling fans going on here, which I'm curious that he needs that with an open top tank. Um, and that's a nice easy way to cool things down. Nice clean sump with a lot going on, but it's still clean, organized. So he's getting a lot done in the sump with not a lot of space. Part of that's because he put his ATO container outside of the tank. ATO containers, to make them worthwhile, they gotta be fairly sizable. Like an ATO of two gallons, 120 gallon tank with cooling fans and open top, you're probably gonna blow through two gallons every two days. So to have a sizable ATO to fit under your stand, it's gonna eat up a lot of space. An easier way is to put it off to the side. Now, there's nothing wrong with how it is. If you wanted a little interior decorating tip, you can easily put some kind of basket or this inside a small like um, sideboard type of thing to hide it and to make it less visible. If it was just dudes living here, they'd be like, whatever, forget it, no big deal. I like the lighting on the top so we can see what's going on. It makes the video look really great and it's very easy to see what's going on in the sump. You're not digging around in the dark, trying to hold your smartphone while you're looking for something underneath there. It really makes a difference when you can see what you're doing underneath the stand. Let's have a look at some automation. Check this out. I saw this in the video and I was like, this is cool. That's a feed button. And you can see it's actually like a little shrimp. You press a button and it feeds the tank. That's cool. And this panel comes right off the side to give us all the Apex stuff that's out of the way. Okay, so a couple things here I like about this. One, he's got a panel behind it, so it's away from any splashing. Two, he has all the cords coming from underneath. So the, there's no real issue there of water coming up the cord. It's not gonna happen. Very unlikely that any water's gonna get over the top of this thing on there. We're not gonna have water coming down it uh, because of how he has the cords run. And what I really like at the top here, there's a gap from the top of the board to the bottom of the stand. There's a gap there, which is gonna let air flow through this section. There's fans on the energy bars. Some of the stuff gets warm. It needs to breathe. You gotta get air through there. So by having the top open like that, it lets some air come through here and help, help keep everything nice and cool. Liking the battery backup on the system, even if you don't have a generator, a battery backup can go a fairly long way um, to giving your fish oxygen, promoting gas exchange in your tank when the power is out. Okay, so he could do a little bit better cord wrangling there on, uh, on this control panel here, but everything is easy to get to. Sometimes managing those power bricks can get a little challenging. There's always something you could say about a tank, but I bet that he doesn't spend a lot of time looking at that. Hopefully he spends more time looking at the beautiful uh, display tank right here which I love the fish. Again, I would add some wrasses. Love the coral. This thing's gonna look like a baller tank. Okay, so while I'm looking at this, before we go, he said he wants to add more LPS to the sand bed. I would consider adding some SPS on the trunks of these flat top trees, especially some torts um, or stags. It's gonna grow not so much like a bush, but more like a big tree that's gonna spread out. It's gonna take them some time because they're not gonna get as much light as their buddies up top. But when they do grow out, they're gonna grow away from that stem and have a nice big dramatic growth pattern up towards the light. That would look really cool. Nice little touch to add to the tank. Got the patience for it, go for it. Clearly you're doing well with this tank. Some tweaks and really make a baller SPS tank. <laughs>